pay a little bit of money and thank you for giving me the opportunity to give this talk here. Um, my name is Mohamed Akash, I'm from Israel, I'm from Nazareth, I should be sleeping now. I'm still awake. I, so the title of my talk is Impulsive Ejection of Gas in Bipolar Planet and Annually. This research was done by me and my Inam Sukhair. I'm actually a former PhD student of Noam. And uh, in this talk, I will present actually a, a try to explain uh, a, some kind of plant or nebulae, how they're formed actually. Uh, and we uh, mainly we, we focus on the uh, bipolar planet or nebulae, and which also have a clumpy lobes that expand away from the center. We use Cartesian grid, XYZ, 
said, regular, not spherical, not any assumptions. We have no gravity. And also, I, I told you before, instead of getting transfer and cooling, we learned the dependent index gamma to mimic cooling. So, in this research, I actually used gamma, for example, equal 1.675 hertz or 1.1, 1.05, as we will see later. Uh, so again, this is applicable only at the early stages before the electric process. Uh, and several values of gamma were tested. Okay, here are our initial conditions. We have the HEV shell, dense shell, the mass of this shell is 0.1 solar mass, and its velocity is 10 km per second. Uh, our jets are with a velocity of 1,000 km per second and the, the mass of the of the jet is 0.13 solar mass per year. So if, if, if this is our uh, M dot, the, so, uh, the mass loss, then the jets active for two months will give a, a total mass in jets 0.02 solar mass. Our initial uh, temperature is 10,000 km and half opening angle of uh, each jet is uh, 50 degrees, so we are talking here about white jet. Okay, here we see the flow uh, setup. Uh, at the center we have uh, the companion which flow two jets. Uh, uh, here in blue actually we have a uh, gas with low density. In green, or I'm not sure what is this color, is very dense. It is uh, actually the dense shell between radius 10 to the 14 and 2 10 to the 14 centimeter. Okay, so our two opposite jets are launched from near the center, starting at t equals 0. This is the start of the simulation and are active for two months. So we have actually a duration for the month that the, uh, the jet activity, not all the time we have the jets. And this is not occupied by the dense shape of our field at t equals zero with a low density wind that they are expanding with a velocity of 10 km, uh, km per second. I mean, uh, uh, all the space here, or all the bus, <coughs> uh, has, the, has a wind with low density, uh, otherwise in the dense shape and uh, our shape. Okay, here is the first uh, result I am showing you here. This is a temperature map. Uh, uh, actually, notice that we simulate the entire space and apply no symmetry folding. Okay, everything here is in a log scale, and this water for gamma equal to one point one. Uh, as we see, I actually write each uh, for each region what it is about. Uh, here, for example, we have the jet gas. And uh, here we have the, the forward shock, we have here the instability. What is going on, uh, on here is that as the shock gas material uh, interact with the dense shell, since the density of the shell is lower than the, de the dense shell, uh, the flow will become relatively unstable. And these fingers that we are seeing here is just the relative instabilities. As um, I think we are Stability. Okay, and this uh, uh, result is actually notice that we have a uh, 3D box, but here I'm showing uh, the uh, slides at the mid of the box. If this is X and Z, so this Y equals zero, and at 76 days. Here I'm showing uh, the evolution of the density according to the uh, what I explained now at the middle of the box, uh, at three different times, 34 days, uh, 57 days, and 76 days. Uh, for, uh, this is uh, 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 for gamma equal to 1.1. Uh, here, uh, actually, here we start to see the instabilities on the head of the jet. And here, after we turn off the jet, we see nicely the fingers of the instabilities which are expanding. This at later time can explain, for example, a uh, planetary nebula like uh, NGC 6302. I will show you a picture of it later. Uh, actually, uh, after this conference, I decided that as I come back home, I will add a transfer to the code. 
since we have a uh, assumed uh, that uh, we have no pulling, no radiative transfer, and we just uh, following another uh, mechanism. Uh, here I'm showing also three uh, slices of the density, but at the same time, which is 57 days, and the four different gammas. The first gamma is 1.02, the second one is 1.05, and uh, the effect is 1.05. 1. Uh, actually, we see that here uh, the jet pass long distance, distance since the cooling is higher than the first one. Uh, here we have less cooling and then less of this, so the gas will expand more. Uh, here I plot uh, at the same three times I showed, uh, I showed before. Uh, this is actually the ratio of the relative instability growth time to the time of the simulation. For gamma equal uh, 1.1. Actually, here we see the instability, but in another uh, unit, uh, we looked for the regions where we have relative instability, so according to the condition of relative instability, that grad P dot grad rho uh, is negative. Okay, and we plot the ratio of the time, the relative and flow time. Uh, Sorry, the, the, the time of the simulation. Uh, about the different colors here, red regions are less stable. In yellow regions, the extremely growth time is long, and white actually is a stable. So, to summarize, we simulated a new regime in jet stage UV wind interaction where the photo diffusion time must be considered. Uh, our main findings are as the following. Instabilities developed and dense fingers are formed very close to the binary system. At much later times, <coughs> the total planet is angular with cloud pilots and the linear distance velocity a relation will be observed, like this one, which is MGC6302. Uh, this is actually one uh, possible candidate for uh, our uh, research. Here is actually uh, the same picture, but larger. And here we, if anybody interested in the numerical setup, you can uh, read me or can talk to me later. Okay, thank you very much. Questions? Concerns? Yes, well. Can I show my kids now? Uh, we have discussion time. Okay, yes. So my question is about the masses. Do you think it's really reasonable that after you've formed this dense shell already which contains, I don't know how much mass in your simulation, and then you eject 0.2 solar masses more in the polar direction? It seems like a, you're getting rid of a lot of mass when we don't see that much mass in these PN. Actually, you talk about the mass in the dense shell? Uh, well, because it's going to, the total mass is going to be an estimate of the total mass of the nebula, right? Yeah. The mass that you have in the dense shell and then the mass that you eject to interact with it. So it seems like it would be a lot. So this question is about the parameters that we, that we took here. So we used a paper by Noam Sukher and the Amit Kashi, Kashi not Kashi, it's another guy. <laughs> and the, uh, I, I actually took the parameters from there and we compared to uh, I, I, the, the market of for um, or we compared with uh, observation and it's okay. So this mass is okay. Let, let me answer it. The, uh, the total mass is not large, it's 0.1 solar mass, maybe 0.15, which is not ejected in a very short time. But I think we should get we should think about it at least. In every V star this is what you see. Eta Karina in 20 years goes 10 solar mass, maybe 40. So, if the AGP is unstable and the binary interaction is very slow, there is no reason, you know, just lose it. But when you look on this planetary level, you see linear relation between distance uh, and, and velocity, which tells you everything happens on a very short time scale, which can be months, maybe several years. But the time level is very short time, which should be explained.
possible? Yes. So taking your image there and your scenario of the periastrum passage doing all of this, where's the companion now? So this, this nebula is how many years old? 10,000, 20,000, something like that? So the companion passed by once, making this episodic ejection, and then went off into the distance, right? So what's your scenario? Is this a really long period binary? Is something like 10,000 years period with a very close periastrum passage, so the eccentricity is very, very, very high? Or is this something that passes by more than once, but then magically the orbit is not altered so that you don't have a merger? So this is the thing I was saying yesterday. I still don't understand these periastral passages because in my experience, both in the models and just looking at orbits, either you have a periastral passage that quickly, after two or three periods, results in a merger or in a common envelope, or you have something that's really, really long, but then it has to have a very high eccentricity and you can lose it after one periastral Look at that, yeah. Look at that, It's exactly just scale it down, do nothing, scale it down. What we don't want to do. I want to observe it. Look at the Karim. This is what you see. See, it's basically our point nine. We don't know exactly. We know the orbit period exactly 5.52 years, and we know how it behaved 150 years ago. We know the lesser eruption 19, the excuse me, 80, 90, 120 years ago happened exactly at the last passage. There was one. It's a, it's, it's a little one on the side, and this is. Our part of the Eta Karina. So every 5.5 years something happens? 5.52. In Eta Karina, it's learned from other objects. Out of that scale. Out of that scale. Yeah. I'm saying every 5.5 years you don't get an eruption, you don't get an eruption of whatever it is. No, no, no. no. This but you get, you get fun <laughs> activity. The X ray astronomers have been using for years. No, no, no. You, you need two things. You need the AGP, or in the case of Eta Carina, the LBV stuff to be an unstable phase, and then the companion can agree to jet and so on. Then it relaxes. You can, do it, you can repeat it several times. But in AGP, probably it's uh, not much uh, there because. So, okay, so Jason will give the last talk before.